Break down all today's developments. Let's go to our legal panel now. Bill Brennan is the former attorney for Donald Trump and trial attorney Mercedes Colwin is here with me on set. Mercedes, you just said a second ago, Todd Blanche, attorney for Trump, was smoking today. He, he was on fire. This is what we were waiting for because Tuesday was kind of flat. It was flat. It really, Todd needed that extra day to look through the transcript, look at what the initial testimony was when Michael Cohen was on the, on the stand and direct for the prosecution and just really delve into it. It's easy. You're, you want to trap him in the lies. You want to say to the jury, he's a liar. Look how many times that he lied. He lied to Congress. He's committed bank fraud. Just like your intro said, all of those things say falsus in unum, False is plurum, which means false in one, false in everything. That has to be the way they close this case. You can discount his entire testimony based on that jury instruction that will be given to the jury. Bill, this is key because while there is ample evidence of the hush money payment, evidence that the motive was all political to bury the story before the election, ample evidence of the falsified business records, it is only Michael Cohen who connects the crime to Donald Trump. You have to believe him in order to believe Trump committed a crime. Elizabeth, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And Mercedes is uh, right about the falsest and unum falsus and omnibus. It's going to be a deadly charge here. And you're right to get it. It's picture a castle with a moat around it. And the only bridge is Michael Cohen. And if Michael Cohen isn't truthful, the bridge collapses. Not one juror would try to get to that castle. This man lies, then he lies again, then he lies about the lies he told. And it was devastating when Mr. Bla uh, Blanche hit him with the phone call, second motive, because there's an interesting parallel here, Elizabeth. This whole case is going to hinge upon uh, was it the defendant's motive to save his marriage and his family, or was it for political purposes? And now we find out, because Cohen never mentioned fighting with a 14-year-old child. Yeah. Now we find out that he's, he's engaging with a 14-year-old child saying, I want to tell the Secret okay, okay. Service. All right, we have uh, to. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You're getting ahead of me, Bill, um, because you're so smart. Um, sorry, let me sorry. set it up for our audience. There was this focus on this phone call. This was everybody, everybody in the courtroom said this was the most dramatic uh, moment today. A phone call that we set up uh, just now, a minute and 36 seconds, that Cohen made to Keith Schittler, who was Trump's bodyguard. Cohen testified to that call uh, on, on direct examination, saying, it was during that phone call and in October 2016 that he told Trump, I've paid her off, it's done, I've taken care of it. Um, but Todd Blanche got Cohen to admit that the first part of the phone call was actually to Keith Schiller, during which time he complained about some crank phone calls he was getting from a 14-year-old kid. And then Blanche is incredulous. It's very dramatic in the court. Blanche is incredulous. He says, are you telling me in one minute and 30 seconds you complained to Keith Schiller all about this 14-year-old kid giving you crank phone calls, and then he passed the phone to Donald Trump and you said, oh, and by the way, I paid off Stormy Daniels. He's laying the groundwork that this story is too crazy to be believed. Elizabeth, think about it. Cohen said he calls Mr. Schiller, who's his direct access to the then president, and he has this bombshell to deliver. I've taken care of the Stormy Daniels matter. But, oh, by the way, I have a seventh grader that's making crank calls on my phone. I mean, he never heard a call block. I think that moment uh, wins this case for the defense. I'm going to blow you right out of the water with all due respect to you. If I were the prosecutor, I would say, let's stop the clock for a minute and 36 seconds. I've done that in trial. It is incredibly effective. When you stop the clock, that minute and 30-some seconds is an eternity. So, hey, can you believe this 14-year-old started cranking me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Here's, here's the boss. Hey, boss, everything's taken care of. I paid. Everything's done. Thank you. Goodbye. That's how you do it. That's how the prosecutor can blow that part of the testimony out of the water. Are you bothered by the fact that he's threatening the 14-year-old with calling the Secret Service on him if he doesn't stop <laughs> oh, I mean, a phone call? Oh, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, well, look, he is... Come on. <laughs> He's such Who a flawed. <laughs> it is, he is such a flawed witness. 
But the prosecution has exactly what we're talking about. They literally rested their entire case on this person. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.